You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Let's now go to uh, the folks with the issue with COVID-19 vaccine. Another issue, how black folks have been greatly impacted. One of the things that we're dealing with, we've been disproportionately impacted by the deaths those who have been tested positive for COVID-19. Now we're dealing with also this, this, you know, a lot of black folks not wanting to take the COVID-19 vaccine. There's been a significant effort to get folks uh, to understand the importance of it uh, for us to get uh, our seniors and others uh, vaccinated. President Joe Biden earlier this week said that he hopes by July there'll be enough vaccines in America for every single citizen. Hopefully that is the case. Joining us right now, Dr. Peter Hotez, co-director of the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children Hospital. Uh, Dr. Hote is certainly glad to have you on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, thank you. Good to see you again, Roland. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, as Yes, it has been. Uh, you, you, you posted something on Twitter that caught my eye when you said, I will do any and every show uh, uh, out here to, to encourage Americans, but especially African-Americans, uh, to take the vaccine, to explain to people about its efficacy, that, uh, about how, that how safe it is as well. Uh, but 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 there's just a lot of. I saw one story where one in I saw an AP survey actually. One in three Americans have said they're not going to take the vaccine. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, we did a study uh, with a group of social scientists at Texas A and M, and what was interesting is we looked at the groups that are saying they may not take the vaccine or won't take the vaccine, and it came out to the same two groups that the Kaiser Family Foundation. Found, so maybe there's something to this because we found identical results and it's pretty impressive. Uh, the two groups that are saying they won't take vaccines are one, Trump. we found Trump voters and second, the African-American community and the Kaiser Family Foundation found, they didn't call them Trump voters, they called them Republicans and the African-American community. So for two very different reasons, we think these are the two groups that we're worried are going to uh, refuse uh, vaccines. And so for that reason, I'm trying to go on as many uh, black radio shows, African-American shows that um, uh, specifically work with African-American communities as I can to bring up those numbers because I'm really worried. And the reason I'm especially worried, Roland, is some new numbers that have just come out, including numbers that came out today. And it turns out that uh, the new numbers from the first half of 2020, not even the worst part of our epidemic, has found that life expectancy among the African American community from COVID-19 is going to is going to decrease by almost three years, and that's a huge number because remember that's a that's an average. Um, it doesn't mean that everyone's life is cut off from 80 to 77. What it means is that on either side of that number we're using losing huge numbers of people from the Black community, and and particularly what I'm worried about are moms and dads in their 40s and 50s and 60s. And this is, I think, going to turn out to be the real devastation that comes out of this COVID uh, epidemic. A generation of African-American families losing their moms and dads in their 40s and 50s and 60s, basically parents of teenagers, parents of uh, still young adults, kids really in their young 20s. And it's a story not being told. And it's backed up by an earlier CDC number that found about a third of the deaths from COVID-19 in the Black communities occurring of people under the age of 65. So when I saw that vaccine hesitancy in the African-American community, I said, wow, uh, this is an opportunity to save lives, especially those moms and dads in their 40s and 50s and 60s. And that's how I was really thrilled when you gave me the opportunity to come out today. Is that um, is important messaging that's critically important. Do you believe that the federal government and state health departments uh, should be having clear campaigns with affected groups from trusted voices? And I don't mean celebrities. Uh, we know based upon various studies that people, that African Americans, only 7% follow the advice of celebrities. People always want to say, Hey, let's get a celebrity out here, do some PSAs. Uh, I saw a story today on ESPN.com where they said NBA players are wary about encouraging people to take the vaccine. Well, first of all, black people are not listening to celebrities. I know. To me, this is where the federal government, 
state health, state health departments, county health departments, city health departments must be drilling down and going to black newspapers, black radio, digital operations, same thing in the Latino community, going really grassroots, uh, creating a level of partnerships, creating pop-up, creating pop-up uh, vaccination uh, spots where people are able uh, to get to. In the town hall the other day uh, on, on, on CNN, President Joe Biden talked about uh, the difficulty of uh, certain segments of the black and Latino community when it comes to getting online, knowing where to go, how to, how, how to access. And there was some people who were upset by saying, oh, he said black people can't, can't get online. Okay, numbers don't lie. Okay, I, I mean, look, I have people who, who, who had to teach their uh, uh, their 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 uh, grandparents who want to watch my show how to watch this show uh, on their phone or on their television or on their computers. And so there has to be an extremely aggressive communications plan and outreach to targeted communities in order for them to be able to understand the vaccine, understand the process, and for them to understand. Other people have taken it who also have not had any issues. Look, there's there's like four or five moving parts to this. So first of all, we have to open up vaccination sites in African American communities, and often that includes low income communities. And we're not doing that. We're too focused on the pharmacy chains and oblivious to the fact that a lot of low income neighborhoods are pharmacy deserts. They don't have the CVS and Rite Aid sitting there and. and in low-income communities. So we've got to make new sites available. And I think the Biden administration gets that and they're starting to uh, really uh, open that up. But also we've got to figure out what the reluctance of segments of the African-American community to take vaccines. And, and particularly because it's been so devastating. I mean, the numbers of hospitalizations and deaths in the African-American community so much higher than the group they call non-Hispanic whites. And, you know, I think the other part of this role and that nobody talks about, and, I, and I've and i noticed it because I'm often targeted myself, is by the anti-vaccine groups. They specifically go after the African-American community. They um, And they've been doing this and starting in 2019, even before COVID, they staged these uh, rallies in Harlem claiming that vaccines caused this and that and comparing vaccines to Tuskegee experimentation, saying it's a cause of genocide. And this has been the new modus operandi of the of the anti-vaccine groups. They targeted the Somali immigrant community in 2017 in the Twin Cities, got them to stop vaccinating, caused terrible measles. Then they did this with the Orthodox Jewish community in 2018 and 2019. They've been targeting the African-American community. So there's there's that component as well. And And I'm really worried because you know, we're all in a, we don't have a lot of time. And the reason I say that is even though the total numbers of COVID-19 cases are dropping now, um, it's short lived because we have these new variants, including a variant coming from the United Kingdom that we call B117. And what that means is that the numbers are about to skyrocket again. Uh, we're see, going to see more transmission and higher death rates. And you know who's going to bear the brunt of this. Once again, it's going to be the African-American communities for a couple of reasons. One, uh, those living in low-income neighborhoods are, are doing essential work. They're not working at home via Skype and Zoom. They're working family-owned businesses, on construction sites. They're getting exposed at higher rates. Second, they're often living in multi-generational homes where you know, a 20-year-old kid comes in from a construction site uh, or uh, working in the police force, he's coming home to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, infecting them and they're getting sick. Um, third, we have higher rates of things like hypertension and diabetes in the African-American community, which uh, exacerbates the severity of the illness. So that's all the perfect storm. And and the reason I'm really concerned right now is we've got to vaccinate ahead of that the variant that's coming out of the United Kingdom. Otherwise, those numbers are going to continue to climb. By next year at this time, the life expectancy will have not have dropped three years as horrible as that'll be. It'll be much more than that. And so, again, doing everything I can to try to sound the alarm and do everything we can to uh, get get uh, people in black and brown communities to get vaccinated. All right. Dr. Hotez, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Roland. I appreciate it. All right, folks, back to that Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. 
When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.